502. All right, let's call this special meeting to order. And Bambi, let the minute show that we have an established quorum. And it's uh, very few action items. But action item A is to hire licensed staff. We had an ALE elementary position that came open right before school started. Have a behavior interventionist here at this building that we are uh, have asked to transfer. He's actually transferring from a classified position to a certified position. Uh, so it is a new hire officially that you all need to approve. Uh, ask that you approve Randall Fleming to start teaching that ALE class. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And now we come to the guaranteed maximum price for administration building as presented by Milestone Construction. So I'm gonna, I'll start real quick. Uh, I want to kind of take us back through where we have been uh, through this whole process. Uh, there was a board work session, oh, I think it's been 18 months ago or longer now where the priorities were set out and the decision was made by the board to move forward to looking at this. We, had, we took a request for construction management companies sat down evaluated those uh, brought that to the board um, and approved milestone at that time to start that process we hired mike spade to uh, as an architectural build architects to do the architectural work and we have spent multiple many i don't even know how many hours talking about the space Part of this space, uh, part of that leading up to that was I sat down with every department head that would be in this complex and uh, talked about what they didn't have right now that they needed and what they felt like they would need as we moved through uh, the future in this. Because if we went down this road and built this project, this is going to be here for four years or more. So we needed to make sure of how we could outfit it so that we weren't building something we need today but then asking to add on to it like you know in a year or two so got all that input went down sat down came out with uh preliminary uh drawings uh, presented that to the board came back uh, made some corrections after our initial estimate uh, the one thing we did not sacrifice was our square footage we tried to do everything we could to keep the square footage that we needed because we felt like it was what we needed not just now, but for the next 10, 15 years at least. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring to the board's attention, and I'll give you this, is I put this together for you guys to see the number of spaces we are currently using and, and what those spaces and the square footage that would be moved into the new administration building. One Spencer. Okay. So all of these, so we went through and we calculated square footage on all of these facilities where we would move. Not only, so we are using currently 12,608 square feet in the district. Uh, which includes 11 offices, seven storage rooms, two classrooms, the boardroom, and the executive session room. And uh, so we're, but we got people stuck in places that are so small, they're really not <laughs> adequate for what they're in. So the square, we have a lot of people in a lot of small spaces, and we have a lot of storage. This storage, also, to, you know, I know all of you know about our storage buildings behind CO and CO2, uh, our woodsheds, so to speak. So if we're going to move into a 20,000 square foot facility, roughly, we've been in 12, and that's a, well, that's a big jump. But that all is going to get us what we believe to be adequate for now. It's also going to lead us down the road to where we have room for growth. So when we built the eight, for, we designed the HR department, we made sure that we had room for two people. 
currently we just have one HR person, but it's not going to be too much longer. We're going to have to have a full-time second one. Uh, we added room as our ESL numbers continue to grow. We added a, there's an extra office there that can be, and then some of these offices can hold multiple people. So there's a plan. We tried to do a really good job of planning, but I wanted to show you this. Not only are we going to move these people in, these 41 people into that facility, we're going to free up 12,600 square feet of building space that we can use for other things. Most of that's going to be right here at the middle school. So we're all the time looking for ways we can do things. Our tech department doesn't have enough storage. If you've been in there lately, you see that hallway where they have stuff just stacked to the ceiling. You know, we have some ideas of what we can do with our those offices. And then we have our Ozark guidance counselors who we're always looking for a place to put. This is going to free up space in our buildings that allow us to do things. And then depending on what the direction the board, you as the board decide to tell us, we can either do something with CO and CO2 or we can sell it and put that money back towards the cost of this building. So, but I wanted you to see the actual square footage, the number of places and the number of people that we're talking about moving currently over into that. Is there any questions about that right now? Okay, so uh, when we finalized the, the floor plan, the architectural plan, and Mike put together the, the, the bid specs so that they could go over to Milestone. Milestone, I'm gonna let Milestone come up here in just a second and explain to you the process they went through. We're gonna, they'll explain to you all of the bids and how that, how that came out. And uh, then I'll let them present their guaranteed maximum price and then we are wide open for questions at any time you have. We're pre I think we're prepared to answer whatever questions you might have at this time. So at this time, I'll uh, Scott and Mike <coughs> Milestone. I'll have them come up, and y'all can take over. All right, I'm Mike with Milestone. Scott, Mike Spay. Glad to be here. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about the process. So once we get the drawings, we disseminate, we uh, advertise <coughs> bids, which, you know, by law, by the letter of laws, statewide newspaper, take care of that. We also advertise through FW Dodge, through Read Connect, and uh, one other nationally. In addition to that, we have uh, a database of subcontractors that we use and send out to uh, that you know, we sent about 1800 invitations through e via email followed up phone calls through a lot of those and through that process um, I think we came out with a total of 130 bids on the job thought we had really good participation through most all categories uh, a couple categories were short but you know most of the large uh, dollar amount scopes we had had really good participation and we feel really good about the numbers that we have had a lot of a lot of questions, a lot of interaction going through the bid process. Um, you know, Mike answered most, all those and feel pretty good about where we are and uh, where the number is. So I guess the question at this point is, do you want to go through each line item? Do you have any questions? Do you, how, what would you like to do there? Ms. Bandon, would you put this up? <clears throat> So you all may not know this. I, I forwarded last night to the board members both this document and the the spreadsheet that had the bid yes. bid tabulation on it, basically. Um, so each of these bid packages that's outlined on this page has a corresponding section in that spreadsheet with the different bidders and what they bid. Um, and as you go down through there, you may see some that are disqualified uh, on the spreadsheet. Uh, because after the bids come in, then these guys have to go through and make sure that they're qualified, bonded uh, through the state, and and yeah, and make sure that they had the scope right. And so some of them didn't quite make the cut. Uh, but am I mistaken in saying that we took the low bid, the low qualified bid? We, we took the low qualified bid in every category. Um, okay. And honestly, there was only only one bid. 
that was disqualified. So all of the low bidders were we found to be qualified and uh, were taken. Question on 5B structural steel erection. 80,000, you only had one bid? Does That's that... actually reversed. We had three bids for structural steel erection. We had uh, Browers, Wilshire, and <coughs> NWA Steel. The metal, the pre-engineered metal building erection, we only had one bidder on, and that was ANCO. So that was flip-flop. No one yes, yeah. Sorry about that. It's all right. And then I have a question about 7A waterproofing. What is what is 7A waterproofing? Uh, so that's a elevator. That's waterproofing at your elevator pit. That'd be the okay. joint sealants in the sidewalks, joint sealants in the masonry, um, and the uh, fluid applied vapor barrier around for the elevator. That's important on that piece of ground. Yes. <laughs> there. As we found out in the high school. Yes. <laughs> They're gonna have a pump in it, or <laughs> the elevator does have a sump pump. Sump pump in it. <laughs> and I'm sure it will be used. Let's hope not. <laughs> okay. Depends on how good the waterproofing is. That's right. <laughs> a lot of water out there in that yeah. area. <sighs> you want to talk to us about? Uh, the alternates at the end and the allowances, what that means. So there are several things. Uh, I'll start with the allowances. So there are several things in the, in the project, like building plaque, that it will be determined and designed at a later date. So uh, building lettering and num number to be determined. Those things will put out to bid after once those are determined, so these are just dollar amounts that are placeholders uh, that should cover those those items. Uh, general conditions or our, our supervision, project management, anything general to the job, our job trailer, port of johns equipment, uh, software, all of those things. And then obviously insurance. The alternates at the bottom, uh, these are these are items that we came up with shortly that could be changed and deduct parts of the cost. So currently as designed, the generator is sitting on the southeast corner of the site. If we move it to the northeast corner next to the transformer, that saves about $25,000. Uh, Incidentally, I told them that's something if it was, you guys approved it, that would be the first thing you can do is move that uh, number two, I believe the brick is being donated uh, by Pipe Life, which is incredible. I've never seen that happen. Uh, <coughs> jet stream. Let's call it jet stream. Jet stream. There we go. Jet stream. Uh, so we're, that's just to replace the brick with the donated, uh, all the labor, everything else in the still base bid. And then the number three is changing out all of the PVC pipe uh, other than any PVC electrical conduit in the project that's also being donated by my flight or jet stream. Sorry. <laughs> so those three numbers would come off of the six. That is correct. 856. And the number at the bottom, the virtual academy breakout, that million is actually included in the six eight. Correct? That is correct. And we asked them to break that out because uh, we added that virtual academy space, uh, believing that we were going to be able to use the ARP ESSER funds uh, because the virtual academy kind of came out of COVID. Um, still, that is still the plan at this point. Uh, but there, there is some question about that because the recommendation that came out of the legislature, legislative committee this summer. Uh, I'm actually meeting with PPC committees, certified and classified, next week to talk about that situation. Um, but if we can still break that out and pay for it with ARPS or money, that million would come from the ESSER funds. And so out of our building fund, it would not be 6.8, it would be 5.8, something like that.
And incidentally, I did I did write a proposal to send that to our facilities division at ADE to get that approval before we started this project to get, make sure that we were approved and spend that extra money on that project and we received full approval to do so. And then it just comes inside if that's we still want to stick with that. Do you all have a guesstimate of the, how long it'll take? Uh, we're scheduling 13 months right now. September. Hmm. How about that? <clears throat> Let me make sure I understand that. So, if we are able to use ESSER funds, then it would take it to five seven eight eight three four seven. In yes, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't done the math on that, but yeah, it's around five eight or five seven five eight somewhere in that coming okay. out of the building fund. Okay. This does not include. Uh, these numbers do not include furniture, fixtures, and fees. So this is the building itself. Um, furniture, Mike Spath would tell me to, to, or he has told me in the past to figure 20%. I usually figure less than that um, because I think we've come in a little bit less than that normally. Uh, but that, that would come out of building fund uh, if we have money in there as well. <clears throat> So the virtual academy, if we can use ESSER funds, that takes it down to <clears throat> 5.8? Somewhere in that neighborhood, yes, sir. And if we cannot, then it's back up on the table whether we do the virtual academy. At this point, um, we would figure out a way to do it. Um, I, I, we have money in our carryover balance that uh, I, I would rather not use for that. But if it comes to that, I, I would, at this point, taking something out of the, pop pro the project is going to delay the project and cause a whole lot of redoing. Um, so I would rather avoid that. Uh, so we would, we'll, we would figure out a way to work it. I would want to leave it in anyway. We put it in for a reason there, yeah. ultimately. A big part of my reason also is the growth which Shane gave us on what they do for the other buildings and where we're right. classrooms. We're already getting complaints of outgrowing areas. So. <clears throat> so estimated time to break ground. Uh, it take about two or three weeks to get contracts in place and get equipment mobilized and ready to move ground. So within a month, then yes, sir. we'd be going. Wow. Yeah, we would we would move as quickly as if we could get here earlier than that. We would, as we want to take advantage of as much dry weather right. as we can, especially with that site. Right. <clears throat> Is there any incentive to push to complete early? Less than 13 months? Um, yes, we always want to finish as early as we can. <laughs> uh, as far as financially, no. Uh, all of the way our contract is structured and the way we deal with public entities is any savings that we have in the job, which would uh, generally come from either items that come up that we find a different way to build and reduce cost or by finishing a project early and reducing those general conditions go back to you 100 percent of that goes back to the board and so with a, a construction manager contract any savings that are that are seen during the course of the project explain what happens there they they 100 percent of that goes back to you so it, as we go through the process you know, we will keep keep the staff updated on where we are budget wise, and those those funds just accrue in the job, and they can either be used on the job or they are just returned. Not really returned. Our contract amount is just reduced at the end of the job. And we've actually had that happen. I think the last two projects that we've had. 
Um, there's contingency money built in, uh, $128,955, second from the bottom, as broken out there. So that contingency is for anything that comes up that's unforeseen. Uh, and if that's where the <clears throat> a, a chunk of money could come back or not be paid out uh, based on what happens during construction. Where are some of those savings usually take place? So the obviously the contingency now in this particular site, given the dirt condition, you know there there's a lot of opportunity for additional cut, additional import, and things that could happen there. But it, a lot of it is in general conditions. If we can finish early, um, okay. that always returns well. Generally, just in the course of the job, there will be things that come up that we have to, the way drawings are material, especially right now, material availability or something may change, or we may be able to get a different product quicker, or for let, you know, and sometimes that'll generate in savings, or if we, you know, we have things that changes that cost additional money, we'll look for a, a place to offset that by producing something else. Do you have any concerns about supply chain issues <clears throat> or material availability? In this climate, yes, always. But uh, most of we've, at this point, we've had, we've been, all the lead times we've been told fall within our projected schedule. And we don't really foresee any issue there now. You know, every day it's something new that's you know, sometimes pipe takes six months to get. I assume there, this is only good for, uh, for how long? Uh, in our documents, we, we put in that the bids would be held for 60 days from the date of bid. So that was a week ago. I can tell you we have proposals that are 30 or marked 30 days. And if we get much past 30 days, it, it will get a little hairy. Well, and I can confirm that the brick is secured. That's great. It's waiting for us to say deliver. So, yay. There you go. That won't be a hold up. And so that's for that, that time frame, 60 days or 30 or whatever. Those are even the contractors that come later. Down yes. The road. So the but, lock in. as soon as you're as soon as you approve, yeah. we will immediately go back and send out notices to proceed and issue contracts immediately behind that, so that those subcontractors can go and start securing their materials and securing the price. I kind of got an open question. This, <clears throat> in general, for what. All, any three of you can answer this or all three is what are you seeing in the construction environment as far as you know we're sitting here we had talked originally we said 4.5 million then we we're thinking 5.5 million now we're up to 6.8 million so what are you seeing in the construction environment is it you know everywhere you look I know that they're scraping dirt all in Northwest Arkansas. So I guess my co question would be, would you foresee, let's just say for, and next put this, delay this project for a year, would you think there'd be savings or not? If you delayed it a year, I would, in this particular climate, I would not think that you would see any savings. Or would it go the other way? It could potentially go the other way. Yeah. Um, I think there are some materials that will drop in the next year, especially if, if interest rates keep creeping up. You'll see some private projects start to start to tail off. Mm -hmm. Problem is the biggest mark, the biggest project in the market, is not going to tail off, yeah. and it's going to keep manpower. It's going to keep sucking manpower in, and it, you know I don't see. I don't see any major decrease in material cost that would offset increases in labor yeah. and increases in well, that's kind of where I was going with labor. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
That's kind of what my opinion. Michael, what do you think about it? I agree. Okay. I'd agree. It would be, I would be surprised if you said anything, guessed either way, because, I mean, material might, but your labor's going up faster than anything. Fuel, yeah. who knows what that's going to yeah. do, and that affects everything. So, I mean, it could go down, it could go up, but I'm not going to guess. Yeah. So, I want to go back around Thanksgiving of last year when we had a tentative layout of the building and we got some initial costs and the cost per square foot was a little uh, surprising at the time and we asked to look at doing it as a one story as an alternative and after looking at that I, that actually probably delayed the project a couple of months uh, because I asked Michael to redraw a bunch of stuff and get a whole bunch of pricing um, and after you all saw what that difference it was a minimal difference and we decided to go back with two-story version uh, about a month ago when we when they put out kind of I guess it was five or six weeks ago when they put out uh, feelers for what it, bids might come in at we decided we needed to try to cut a little bit we were up around three hundred and fifty one dollars a square foot uh, so there was some cuts, not in square footage, but in some materials and some things that we were going to do inside the building uh, and outside uh, with the parking lot and the and the street. And that price came from three fifty one down to what it is now, which is about three thirty six. Yes, correct. Um, you all have other projects going right now. How does that compare with what you're seeing around Northwest Arkansas? It matches what we see in the market. Honestly, in, in several cases for the products that are used, it's less than what we're seeing in the market. Um, I think we we saw, especially in electrical, you know, the, the participation there, the number that we saw come in, I think was less than what we did, what we had been seeing in the market. Our HVAC price came in very close to or a little less than what we kind of expected it to. Um, Steel came in quite a bit less than we expected it to. So, really? and, and overall, I, I think we're, we've seen, I think the project fell at a good time bid-wise. It, it's a, the time schedule of the project falls for a lot of people and holes that people are trying to fill in their schedule and we saw a lot of participation due to the work of Scott and his guys calling people and uh, just the overall schedule of the project, I think we helped increase our participation and we saw a good turnout and good pricing. I will point out, I, you don't see it in here, but uh, Milestone actually got the bid for one package, two? Three. Three packages, uh, three of the packages, but the way that's done uh, before bid day, before everybody else has to turn in bids and they're opened, if Milestone is going to bid on any projects, they submit a sealed bid to Michael beforehand so that it's competitive in that way too. Um, so they actually have to turn theirs in before the bid, other bids are due. And so they either came in as a low bid or they were the only bidder on some of the packet on them three of the packages. Yeah, so we turn those in 24 hours ahead. It's, it's not actually a requirement, but we do that so that our subcontractors, you know, if they want to ask a question, they can, they can call Michael and they know that we didn't have their number prior to submitting ours. Uh, everything's above board. <clears throat> Just uh, yeah. make sure everybody understands. Well, I, I mean, this is not my forte, but I appreciate all the work that's been done, and I would love to know what question I could ask to cause one of you to walk over to that big old binder. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all just, the bid, that's all the copies, uh, printed copies yeah. of all the bids we received. Right. So, well, Travis. For I made the comment a while ago about the binder. For this amount of money, it ought to be twice the size, right? <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, they might make you one. So, yeah, no kidding. 
So the question may come up that <clears throat> this this project, even if you take the million dollars off and it's at 5.8, it's at more, uh, it, it, that's more than we had in last year's budget in the building fund for this project. Um, and that is that is true. We have, uh, we will go over it at our budget meeting in September, but at the end of last year, we have a, a, a pretty good carryover balance and carryover balance is uh, kind of like a savings account for the school board or the school district. Um, that's any revenues in addition to what we had thought we were going to receive or expenses that were less than what we thought we were going to have for the last school year. Whatever that balance is that carries forward is called our carryover balance. And we have had a pretty good carryover balance for a number of years. Um, so we have money in there that we can transfer over to cover uh, whatever is not in there uh, and be and be comfortable. Well, and how does that work with the carryover if you don't transfer it to a building fund or some designated fund? It goes back to the yes. We, we have to go back to, goes back to the state. Correct. What percent is that? Is that we can or, we can is carry. That the way it's figured? Yes. Percent? By state law, we can carry over 20% of our yearly budget. And so our yearly budget is in the neighborhood of $40 million, give or take. Uh, so 20% of that, okay, 20% of that is around $8 million, which is what we can carry over as a carryover balance. And you may say, well, why do you need that much money? Well, we go the first two months of the school year without getting any revenues. And so we have bills going out and we have uh, payroll going out for two months without any revenues coming in. So we have to have money in the bank. Uh, does it take all of that? No. Uh, but we also have that in case of something like this where we want we need a little extra money to finish a project. We can move that money over to the building fund and, and help that. Uh, also in case of emergencies. Uh, no, you don't have a whole lot of emergencies that are going to cost that much, but it's quite possible to have a a tornado come through at any time and, and damage two or three buildings and that could that could be a significant cost to the district even with insurance and so all the school districts have a carryover balance of some amount um, and we're we're comfortable in that area and can move that money over to carry to cover the cost and not affect the money we had set aside over there in the building fund for the athletic facilities if I remember right, I thought I brought last month's. Was there about four million in the building fund? There's from last year's budget, we set aside four and a half million for the for the admin building and two and a half million for the athletic uh, baseball, softball, tennis. It is what it's going to be, hopefully. Uh, so that was seven million that we set aside over there. We have spent. A portion of that four and a half million for architect fees and construction management fees on the front end. Uh, so it's slightly more than four, four point one, something like that, left in that that portion. So the difference in the two would come from this carryover. Yes, sir. And when you say comfortable, you mean we wouldn't deplete it. Correct. Correct. Well, I think it's important to keep maximum carryover we can. Just that's kind of the way I'm wired. But but you know, the hats off to staff and admin for watching the dollars and cents to where we can have a carryover because we definitely need that, and we certainly don't want to go through the school in distress program. So. That is, it would be no fun. Well, then, in regards to what Grant said as well, we don't know what fuel is going to do. Right. Energy costs are right. going through the roof. Right. I mean, I, it's good for me to hear that we're not depleting that. No. So. We actually, at the end of this past year, we closed out last year today, correct? So last year's financials were officially closed out today, and we will have to move money 
over into the building fund because we have gone over that 20%. And so that two and a half million moving over there puts us down below that 20% just a little bit, but we'll still have a very good cut carryover. And we're already seeing student growth this year. Yes. Starting to worry about classrooms and teachers and yep. so yeah, they can you know, we're gonna need more classrooms and we're gonna need more teachers, which is a good great thing. That's that's what we're all about, educating kids. So if I may uh, I, I point out also I, I work in a lot of districts and I work in a lot of districts where they have carryovers and good comfortable carryovers because their teachers were having to buy stuff. Our teachers don't have to buy stuff for their classrooms. We make sure we cover that. If their principal start determines that they need something in their classroom, then I don't know the time in three and almost I'm going on four years now that we told them no. Like we take care of our people and what they need to do their job. We always are trying to He's always trying to work with you guys to provide as much salary increase as we can. But I think it's important to remember we don't talk, we don't ask our teachers to go out and buy school supplies. We take care of that. We don't want them to actually, because that's not their job to spend their money on that. So we do everything we can to take care of that. And I think it's important to remember, even though we have these big carryovers, that we're still trying to do everything we can to take care of our kids and our people. Good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And I hope, hopefully, teachers feel like they can approach, you know, if they if they do have a need. I know from personal experience, the approach wasn't always made, and, you know, some of it came out of my pocket, but. Right. I mean, I'm But, you know, they just sometimes I think teachers just don't want to ask or they feel like, oh, I don't want to take advantage, but. We need them to make sure they have what they need to teach those kids. I'd like to motion to approve. All right. Second. Any more discussion? We good? Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's build a building. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Okay, I have a little bit of other business just to announce really quick. Okay. We have uh, some classified hires, Julie Reiner, ESL, paraprofessional, uh, Martha Cardenas, food service, and Amanda Parrish, food service. Still have a couple of positions that we are looking for. Um, currently looking for a special ed teacher I know at Intermediate, and that's difficult. And uh at ALE and a couple of bus drivers maybe still and maybe a couple of food service still or we okay we need three food service okay so that's just FYI uh, so we're still if you if you know anybody that's looking for a job we yeah so the bus drivers we've got them covered with temporary covers now or are like are we we're not missing Shane drove this week are a little key, bit are the keys in the bus up in my office <laughs> <laughs> man no. go check <laughs> Uh, we've been able to cover them in the uh, SL Tuesday. I drove a bus in the afternoon. So we make sure the kids home. So we will continue to do whatever it takes to get our kids home. We are crowded. We are going to have to, not overcrowded, but we're probably going to have to add a route or two uh, here pretty quick. But we, we're, I think we've hired two, three bus drivers this week. I think we I think we hired three this week, and so we've got some more working through their life. And, and, uh, so those will help relieve a little bit of crowding. Right. And we've had honestly we've had well we have we've got three out sick. It doesn't help when they're morning and afternoon. Yeah. And then we've had our so we always have two full time subs. They're contracted to come in every day. Because we always have substitute need substitutes, and one of those has not been to work yet. They've had some health issues, but we expect to get them back, that person back tomorrow. And so that's so we're going to get a little bit of relief, but then we're going to add two routes. It's going to complicate that a little bit at some point. 
I was going to just ask that. So we got delivery for the. Eighteen months. It took eighteen months. Yes. Are they out out on the streets already, or are they? No. They're supposed to deliver them this week. Good. Nice. Good. That's all I have, sir. Is that it? Yep. Well, thank you guys for all your work that you've done on this project up to now, and uh, what we started this at a board workshop. How long ago? Shane said 18 months ago, but I think it was three years ago. I'm, I'm going to say, started talking about it about three years ago. Yeah. yeah, so it's nice to see it happen. So. Nice, so even longer. That's right. That's true. We've been talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, since 1970s. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank y'all. Very much. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, thanks guys.